Thank you. Um, first of all, um, our journalist, uh, Irshad, um, and uh, uh, Sahar, your father, uh, I'm praying for them and their families. Uh, courageous, courageous people, and all of those activists and, and people fighting for just the basic, simple uh, rights to live uh, in, in Kashmir. Um, my heart goes out to them every day. I have mostly Kashmiri employees uh, here in Islamabad at Comprehensive Disaster Response Services. Uh, we've been working for 15 years since the Zalzala in 2005, when I lived for five years solid right near the line of control and uh, learned about the stories of Kashmiris and also learned that I didn't learn anything about this from the US media uh, in all of the years before, none of the information or stories or things that happened uh, or the, the whole background of the conflict was never uh, told to the American people and still hasn't. They don't have an understanding of it. Um, the only thing I heard before I came to serve for the earthquake was that Kashmir uh, separatists wanted to separate from India and they were wanted to, to do so violently and they were terrorists. And this is what the narrative has been. So the American peoples uh, and, and the Western uh, uh, countries, the people of those nations, their minds have been brainwashed largely. So unless they uh, come to know from some personal experience or from somebody like uh, me or Daniela telling them, uh, you know, on some whatever platform or, or, or whatever uh, way that we can impart that information to them, Unless that happens, most people just really are ignorant of this. So I, I think that what is really important going forward, because quite honestly, I think we have seen that the Arab countries, other Muslim countries, the West, America, none of these powerful leaders of these countries or their media that are basically bought and paid for by the corporate uh, structure that is tied in with selling uh, bullets and bombs and making money off of war. That seems to be the business model. Uh, none of them are, are interested in the human rights of, of people in Kashmir and Palestine and in these places. Uh, rather, they are interested in India's money and markets and the larger uh, economic picture that benefits uh, them personally. foundational documents that say who we are as Americans and what we believe in, unfortunately, those documents have all been forgotten about when it comes to the greed of our politicians nowadays and the corporate interests that have forgotten about our founding principles uh, that, that, that go for the, the money and the power. And so they know very well what India and, and the BJP and the RSS stand for. They know that they're modern day fascists. They know that they have destroyed their own constitution in order to, uh, to do what they've done in Kashmir. And, and, and they know how they treat uh, people of lower castes or minorities as second class, third class, fourth class citizens. They know the brutality, but they simply just don't care because the money is good and India is a big market and it seems to be that that's what they are uh, interested in. And I think we've kind of seen that this plays out over and over and over, that there are very few senators and congressmen and, and leaders that care about this issue and do something and even pay lip service to it. I, I don't have a lot of faith that the Biden administration is going to be any different because candidate Obama, he spoke about Kashmir uh, a little bit as a candidate, but then in eight years of his presidency, we didn't hear Kashmir mentioned once that I can remember of note. So I have no faith in the US government. I have no faith in the Western media. I think they've all sold out. And I think that they're all hypocrites. And I think that they are largely psychopathic and narcissistic and really don't care and don't give a damn about humanity or suffering people uh, in Kashmir. So I think no matter what we do, we can beg them, we can bomb them, we can, whatever we do, it's just not gonna matter uh, to them. They're not going to 
uh, do what they should do, which is to economically boycott India and make it so painful for them to do what they're doing that they would let go of some of these draconian measures. But nobody's going to do it, and so India is not going to stop. So really, there's only, really for me, there's only two outcomes here. One is that uh, uh, the almighty creator would throw a comet at this planet and be done with all of us because we failed as human beings and maybe unleash a worse virus than COVID-19 so that it can wipe all of us out so that if we're not going to give justice to anybody that we can have justice for nobody. So I hope that doesn't happen. I hope the other thing happens and that's that the younger generation, uh, the kids, the young people, the youth of this world would somehow be reached by people uh, like our brave, courageous journalist, uh, Irshad Hussein, and all of you wonderful activists. I would hope that somehow we can communicate with the youth of this world, that they can somehow uh, understand what it means to be human being, and they can understand how important it is to respect the human rights and the dignity and humanity of all people, and that injustice anywhere is injustice everywhere, and that we can somehow maybe move on from the greed and the narcissistic, psychopathic nature of the system of the world that we've created now, and somehow we can rely on our youth of the world and show them uh, what's going on, and hope, hopefully that we can appeal to their sense of humanity and their hearts so that the collective humanity could somehow end the unjust system that we have in Kashmir, Palestine, and many other places, and even in America, where our African Americans and our Native Americans and minorities are mistreated and Muslims are made to feel unwelcome and, 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 and banned from coming and, and all of these things that happen. I hope and I look to only one hope for this world, and that's that somehow the young people can respond to the injustices and right the wrongs uh, in the past and that are going on right now. Otherwise, I hope that we annihilate, annihilate each other in a nuclear war or that, a, that God throws a comet at us and just takes the whole thing out. And I'm sorry that I feel that way, but I would rather have that happen than to continue living in a world of injustice. And I say that as a person who has a Pakistani wife with a, a four month old baby in her belly. And I would like that baby to be born in a world of justice, but I don't know if that's gonna happen. But I really, really honestly hope and pray for this world that we come out of this and that we don't go the other direction. And that's all I have to say. Uh, I pray for all of you amazing, brave, courageous people that you'll have some success reaching out to the young people of this world and asking anybody that cares about this to please uh, call, write, email, uh, message as many people who don't know about this situation as you can and try to turn the tide one person at a time so that maybe in some kind of mirac miraculous grassroots level that we can change this horrific, horrific, unjust situation that we have in this world. Thank you.